Number 10. Peggy Guggenheim Peggy Guggenheim established the unconventional New York Gallery, known as the Art of the Century, setting it apart from other art enterprises of the time. The gallery, which featured displays of Guggenheim's modernist art collection, was not purely commercial, although it did witness notable sales. Operating for just five years in the 1940s, during that brief period, it became a favorite destination and gathering place for the art world elite, and earned recognition for championing women artists at a time when the art scene was predominantly male-dominated. Prior to the art of the century, Guggenheim had already opened the Guggenheim Jeune Gallery in London in 1938, where she showcased the works of Marcel Duchamp, John Arp, and others. However, due to the looming threat of World War II, she closed the London Gallery and relocated to the United States. In the US, Art of the Century continued the avant-garde tradition with distinct rooms dedicated to kinetic art, surrealism, and abstraction. Exhibitions such as Exhibition by 31 Women, featuring artists like Dorothea Tanning, Hedda Stern, and Frida Kahlo, pushed the boundaries of artistic expression. Art of the Century indirectly contributed to the rise of abstract expressionism, as it hosted Jackson Pollock's first solo show in 1943, and the Museum of Modern Art purchased his painting She-Wolf from the exhibition, which was created the same year. In 1947, when Guggenheim moved to Venice, she closed her gallery and assisted her artist in finding representation at the Betty Parsons Gallery, which would later gain global recognition for its abstract expressionism exhibitions in the 1950s. Number 9. Paul Rosenberg Commencing his career at the age of 18 by acquiring art for his father's enterprise, Paul Rosenberg swiftly ascended to the pinnacle of Paris' art scene in the early 20th century. He secured exclusive agreements with prominent Cubist artists such as Picasso, Braque, and Leger, taking over the representation from fellow Parisian dealer Daniel Henry Kahn Weyler. Remarkably, Rosenberg adopted an unconventional approach to his success, ensuring the sale of iconic artworks from art history alongside innovative pieces. This strategy guaranteed profitability, even if more experimental art remained unsold. Tragically, Rosenberg's life took a devastating turn during World War II, when the Nazis occupied France. As a person of Jewish heritage, he endured prosecution and had his extensive art collection plundered. Following the conclusion of World War II, Rosenberg reestablished his gallery in New York, dedicating himself to the arduous task of recovering his looted art, a mission that his family continues to pursue today. Paul Rosenberg's profound influence on the art world is undeniable, a testament to his unwavering commitment to art, his resilience in the face of adversity, and the indelible legacy he has left behind. Number 8. Julian Levy Julian Levy stands as a towering figure among the most influential art dealers of the 20th century, ardently advocating for surrealism experimental film and photography. The Julian Levy Gallery, established in Manhattan in 1931 and closed in 1949, played a pivotal role in the cultural avant-garde shift from Paris to New York. Levy introduced many artists, often for the first time in New York, including luminaries such as Berenice Abbott, Henri Cartier-Bresson, Joseph Cornell, Salvador Dali, Max Ernst, Walker Evans, Frida Kahlo, Man Ray, Lee Miller, Ben Shan, and Dorothea Tanning. Berenice Abbott captured a portrait of Levy in Paris shortly after his departure from Harvard to set sail for Europe with Marcel Duchamp. His shaved head paid homage to his father-in-law the Dada poet boxer Arthur Craven and symbolize Levy's avant-garde aspirations. 
Number seven, Pierre Matisse. The son of the renowned artist, Henri Matisse. Pierre Matisse embarked on his own artistic journey, receiving instruction from the Fauvist painter, André de Rennes. However, he eventually shifted his focus towards the art market and transitioned into a successful art dealer. The gallery established in New York achieved legendary status, providing significant support to artists like Balthus, Marc Chagall, Jean Miro, and Yves Tanguy. Notably, Pierre's gallery maintained an independence from his father's work, as it never hosted a solo exhibition of Henri Matisse's art. Despite his initially unassuming presence at the gallery, Pierre Matisse's reputation far surpassed his own persona. Over the years, he built a substantial art collection and played a crucial role in shaping the holdings of the Museum of Modern Art, facilitating the acquisition of key works by Henri Matisse. Upon Pierre Matisse's passing in 1989, dealer Eugene V. Thaw remarked to the New York Times that his death marked the true end of an era, both in the realm of art dealing and in artistic taste. Matisse exemplified the impeccable judgment that brought exceptional European modernist art to the United States, and his name symbolized the standard of quality that has become a thing of the past. Number 6. Edith Halpert Edith Halpert, born in 1900 in Odessa, then Russia, was a groundbreaking figure in the world of American art. She served as a pioneering art dealer in New York City, specializing in American modern art and folk art. Halpert's downtown gallery, established in 1926, held the distinction of being the first commercial art space in Greenwich Village, exclusively dedicated to contemporary American art by living artists. Throughout her four-decade career, Halpert propelled numerous avant-garde American artists to recognition and market success. Her roster of showcase talents included Ellie Nadelman, Max Weber, Jack Levine, Jacob Lawrence, George O'Keefe, and others. Halpert's influence extended to American folk art in select 19th century American painters such as Raphael Peale, William Michael Harnett, and John Frederick Pito, whom she regarded as precursors to American modernism. Crucially, she also supported black artists, most notably with the 1941 exhibition American Negro Art. She also helped form the Negro Art Fund, which aimed to place works by black artists in museum collections. Number 5. Daniel Henry Kahnweiler. Born in Germany in 1884, Daniel Henry Kahnweiler was a multifaceted figure, serving as an art dealer, writer, and publisher. In 1907, he established an art gallery in Paris, and by the following year, he had begun representing Pablo Picasso, subsequently introducing him to Georges Braque. Kahnweiler played a pivotal role in championing the groundbreaking cubist experiments of these artists and acquired the majority of their paintings between 1908 and 1915. Furthermore, he authored the influential book The Rise of Cubism in 1920, which provided a valuable theoretical framework for the cubist movement. In creating a portrait of Kahnweiler, Picasso, departed from the pursuit of realistic representation, opting to deconstruct and reassemble forms. He portrayed Kahnweiler with a complex network of ethereal, semi-transparent surfaces that seamlessly merge with the surrounding atmosphere. Forms were fractured into various planes and faceted shapes, viewed from multiple perspectives. Despite the portrait's highly abstract nature, Picasso incorporated discernible attributes like a wavy hairline, a tight knot, and a watch chain to guide the viewer's gaze and focus their interpretation. Number 6. 
Number 4. Joseph Devine Joseph Devine, born in 1869 in Hull, England, made an indelible mark on the art world as a prominent art dealer in the early 20th century. His remarkable expertise lay in sourcing, restoring, and promoting old master paintings to an untapped market at the time, affluent American collectors. To this respect, he served distinguished figures of his time, like Henry Clay Frick, whose collection boasted Vermeers and Rembrandts, thanks to Devine's guidance. Devine's influence also played a pivotal role in Andrea Mellon's acquisition of a multitude of artworks, including masterpieces by the likes of Raphael and Titian, forming the core of the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Joseph Devine initially captured widespread attention in 1905 when he acquired Rodolf Kahn's collection for $4 million, equivalent to approximately $121 million of today. He not only recouped his investment, but also generated substantial profits by selling artworks from Kahn's holdings, including the iconic 1653 Rembrandt painting Aristotle with a bust of Homer, currently held in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Devine's blend of expertise and charm left an enduring legacy in the art world, profoundly shaping the collections of eminent museums and private collectors worldwide. Number 3. Paul Durand Ruel Paul Durand Ruel, born on October 31, 1831, in Paris, came from a family with a modest art and antiques business background. However, he would go on to become one of the most influential art dealers of his time. Durand Ruel's early experiences in the family business provided him with valuable insights into the art market. He initially engaged in the sale of traditional academic art, but later underwent a profound transformation in his approach. Durand Ruel's breakthrough came when he discovered the innovative work of Impressionist painters in the mid-19th century. He was among the first to recognize the talent and potential of artists like Monet, Renoir, Degas, and Pizarro. Despite facing considerable criticism and rejection from the mainstream art establishment, he championed the Impressionist movement, collecting their works in significant quantities. To support these artists, Durand Ruel organized exhibitions and tirelessly promoted their paintings, both in France and abroad. He was instrumental in introducing Impressionism to American audiences, particularly in New York, where his exhibitions garnered attention and established the movement's reputation. His steadfast commitment to the Impressionists not only changed the course of art history, but also solidified his own legacy as a visionary art dealer, who helped shape the art world's direction in the late 19th century. Number 2. Alfred Stieglitz Alfred Stieglitz's role in shaping modern art in the United States was multifaceted, extending beyond his renowned photography career. He made a significant impact as an art dealer, curator, publisher, and editor. Stieglitz is widely acknowledged for pioneering the ascent of modern photography in America during the early 20th century. He achieved this through his publication of the influential periodical Camera Work and the formation of the Photo Secession Exhibition Society. Stieglitz also managed a series of influential galleries, beginning with 291, where he not only showcased photography, but also introduced European modernist painters and sculptures to the American art scene, while also nurturing America's own modernist talents, including his later wife, George O'Keefe. He steadfastly argued that photography deserved recognition as a fine art, exemplifying this through his own work, characterized by technical brilliance in capturing tone and texture, and a penchant for exploring atmospheric qualities. In his later years, 
influenced in part by Cubism and other artistic trends, he shifted his focus towards straight photography, favoring clarity and reducing lavish effects. Number 1. Ambras Vallard With a blend of intuition, enthusiasm, and sharp business acumen, Vallard left an indelible mark on the evolution of early European modernism by nurturing the careers of several seminal artists. While he is famously recognized as the art dealer who played a pivotal role in discovering Port Cezanne, he established numerous other significant professional relationships, although not all of them were without their challenges. These artists included luminaries such as Paul Gauguin, Pierre Auguste Renoir, Edgar Degas, André Deren, Maurice Denis, and Pablo Picasso. Beyond his passion for painting, Voyard was a rare advocate of the graphic arts during his time, actively promoting the Nabis group, mentoring them as they explored new artistic mediums, notably venturing into the realm of color lithography. Additionally, Voyard ventured into book publishing, contributing substantially to the international acclaim of early modernism's foremost pioneers by authoring monographs on Cézanne, Degas, and Renoir, and by elevating the standard of print albums to create the deluxe Livre d'Artiste book. His impact on the art world remains a testament to his diverse contributions to the burgeoning era of modernism. Thanks for watching.